Welcome to What's Up in Jeju, where I visit places around the island and talk about what's happening with Hashtag Daily K's host, Peter Bint. Uh, today, yeah. where are you going to be taking us on Jeju Island? Okay, so before we get into it, I just want to preface today's show by mm. saying that I'm doing today's show with a little bit of concern, only because I may oh. come off a bit biased or maybe a lot biased and the whole show may seem okay. like some sort of <clears throat> excuse me a huge advertisement or like someone's paid me for like awesome <laughs> reviews so let me just say no no yeah. one's paid me to say beautiful things uh today's opinions are completely 100 oh. my own i'm really looking forward to it because you've never said that yeah so this may, place must be awesome yeah it is for me and i'm it's coming from a very subjective point of view uh it could be today's episode okay. interesting Interview took place at one of my all-time favorite places in Jeju, the Green Tea Maze Park. Have you been, Peter? <gasps> the Green Tea Maze Park? Mm -hmm. I have been to a maze on Jeju Island, but mm -hmm. I don't recall it being in a green tea area, so I'm I doubt yeah, I've not been here. Yeah, this is brilliant. I'm gonna go next time, definitely. Yeah, yeah. So it was one of the first places I was taken to when our family moved here. And it has remained after all this time, we're going on six years as one of my all time favorite places. So let me just quickly tell you why. Oh. Out of all the places I've okay. been to in Jeju, it has the best view, hands down. The best. Number one best view. Wow. Yeah. What? Yes. And this is, of course, this is my opinion, but I'm I'm really big on views. I love just a really nice view. Um, if we're playing image uh -huh. number two, image number two is a okay. map of Jeju. So if you'll notice, the Green Tea Maze Park is on the south side of Jeju. It's in Sogipo. But the view that you that have from there... pink star on the bottom. No. So you, you see two no. pink stars, right? So the yeah. view from the Green Tea Maze Park, you get the entire coast between those two pink stars. Oh. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. So you're a bit further, further kind of inland on R the south side right, of right. this so, park, are you? Right. So it's about 420 meters above sea level. So you get a really uh -huh. nice view. It's like unobstructed panoramic wow. view. Yeah, you just get <laughs> nice. this unobstructed view of the sky melting into the ocean and you get that entire coast. It's just amazing. Uh, you can also see the four islets off the coast, including Kapado and Marado. Marado, which is the southernmost tip of South Korea. But anyway, getting back into the tea, um, I personally... Oh, there is tea there. There is tea. It's a green tea maze park. So I am personally wow. not much of a tea drinker. But I assume that you're more familiar mm. with tea, Peter? Yeah, we love a good cup of tea. I've had loads when I was in the UK. Mm -hmm. It's not green tea, to be honest, although I did find out, and I'm pretty sure I'm mm -hmm. right, they're all the same tea plant. It's yes. just how you prepare the tea, right? Yes. So I do like green tea because it's good for your health as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I learned that too. I didn't know that it's all from the same tea leaves. Uh, but to learn more, mm. specifically the tea industry in Jeju, I had the opportunity to visit the Green Tea Maze Park in Saogipo and interview the founder and owner, Mr. Ko dae -su. So before I get into the details nice. of the tea farm, I want uh, you all to hear for yourself of how Mr. Ko got started and how he he helped the green tea industry in Jeju evolve. All right, here's our first video clip. We are Jeju's Minggan Ilho. Mida, Sunsu Tomine, Atan Chabon, Kajigos, Shakangan, Yaya Ilho. Mida, Yasa, Yavisa Suakan, Doctor, Kajibo, Koko Jagajibo, Kiwasa, called Jeju de Tapogo, Smida, Kresan, Naoke, Sagi, Sagi Tawan, Kadami Chachayama, Onur, Doctor Hanjan, Tongul, Doctor of Yuman. 그 상업 다원도 저희가 이제 녹차 명을 다 공급해서 음. 다원이 됐고 제주도에 한 스무 군데 정도의 그 다원을 조성할 때 저희가 그 묘목도 공급하고 식재 기술도 공급하고 그래서 음. 같이 다 했죠. Oh, he sounds very proud. Yeah, <laughs> he he should be quite proud because, get this, he's the OG of green tea farming in, Je in Jeju. I had no idea when I wow. went. Yeah, but he was telling me the story. So he was just your average day office worker in the city when he decided to follow his passion for tea, specifically green tea. And he moved to Jeju with his family in 1997. And that's when he began planting his green tea seedlings on this land. So it's like 30,000 pyong of land, which is just over 99,000 mm. square uh, meters. 
His was the first wow. tea farm to have been started privately by a resident of Jeju. There was only one other tea oh. farm in Jeju at that time, which is the corporately owned Salok Tawan or Salok. The Salok one is also pretty famous. Like a few of our listeners have mm-hmm. been to that one, but that's yeah. a commercial one, right? Yeah, that's the commercial one. That's the one that's corporately owned. Um, and his was the first that mm-hmm. was privately owned. And then as his plants were growing, he would offer or he would provide seedlings to uh, the government or to other residents of Jeju for them to grow their own tea farms. And he says he's probably helped over 20 tea farms in Jeju get started. So he's, I guess what you could say, like the daddy of tea farms (laughs) in Jeju. I'd say the granddaddy. Oh, yeah. Maybe even the (laughs) great-granddaddy. Yeah. (laughs) That's amazing. Wow, what a story. Okay, so tell us more about Mr. Ko and his business. Okay, so the story continues. Uh, Mr. Ko's business, the Green Tea Maze Park, was doing really well up until about 2007. And then uh, something Mm -hmm. happened in uh, Korean media. A Korean news outlet reported uh, high amounts of pesticide residue in domestically grown green tea. And then it became... Oh, no. Yeah. It became huge, like a hugely controversial hot button issue, and then green tea sales mm. obviously began plummeting just nationwide. Nobody was buying green tea anymore, uh-huh. so Mr. Ko found that he had to pivot, and he had to pivot quickly. So that was when he put his head together with his daughter and created the maze park out of the tea bushes, because um, up until that point, it was just a tea farm, like a privately owned tea farm. Oh. Yeah, and then this was when he they created the maze park and then like a little garden, like garden area. Areas, and then they opened it to the public. Um, I thought it was kind of genius. There are five courses. Uh, when I first started going, there was uh, several. Like there were five main courses, and then I think there was one for like really really small children, like a really easy one. Oh, I'm wow. not sure if that one exists okay. anymore, but the five do exist. So they it ranges in difficulty. Okay. Uh, one being the easiest, and five being the hardest. Wow, are they all in the same maze, or are they all like separate mazes? They're all separate mazes. They all have separate entrances <gasps> and exits. Yeah. Wow, that's that's so cool. How how long, like roughly? Are they pretty tricky, or are they oh. pretty easy to get through? Oh, gosh. You know, I have the worst sense of direction. I'm really bad <laughs> at mazes. Um, I, I, if I go in, I get frustrated. So I try not to go. I just Ugh. sit back in the restaurant or in the cafe uh-huh. and I drink my tea. <laughs> and then I send my uh-huh. husband with the kids. But they, they say it's fun. Uh, so they kept on doing the maze business, but also selling the tea as well. Right. So at that point, then they had two main streams of income to help keep them afloat. Eventually, the scare did die down. But with that, that whole ordeal, tea farms uh, became extremely hesitant, like all over Korea, to use any type of pesticides, and many abandoned mm. altogether. The ones that still do make sure to use pesticides that pass rigorous testing is what Mr. Ko tell, tells me. Um, but he says that uh-huh. the trees that they produce, the, the plants that they produce, are completely organic, so they don't use any pesticides whatsoever. He says the reason why is because it's easier for them to do that because of their elevation, they're higher up, which means it stays cooler for longer and since bugs only start coming yeah. out when the weather gets warmer for him it happens to be the month of may they make sure to harvest all of their tea leaves by the end of april like completely they're done by the end of april ah. so they really have no need so for... just avoid the pesticides right. avoid the pests mm-hmm, exactly so i asked him after he helped birth all of these tea farms on the island how big has the industry grown? And to tell me honestly which teas in Korea taste the best. And I got that on oh. video. Oh, by the way, please excuse the rattling. My tripod was being kind of wacky. <laughs> so why <Okey> I... dokey. <laughs> Let's take a watch. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh, a 
totally unbiased answer, I feel. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that's what I was thinking too. But um, he, I mean, I got to I gotta give him credit where it's due. He is mm-hmm. the granddaddy of Jeju, uh, Jeju Green Tea. <laughs> um, but when we are t- talking about Korean green tea, many people are familiar with Bosong, right? Bosong Nokcha, it's, it's yeah. really famous. Um, so it's assumed that most tea, most of the green tea in Korea come from there. But in actuality, Jeju Island produces about two-thirds of all domestically grown green tea. And Mr. Ko explains wow. that that in the case of Posong, green tea is their main specialty product. So it's like highly advertised and marketed mm. that way. But in Jeju, yeah. our main specialty crop is citrus, our citrus fruit. Um, and then we have our seafood mm. on top of that. So a lot of the advertising power moves in that direction. So as a result, green tea has sort of taken a back seat. Um, so not many people are aware. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then at the end there, as for taste, Mr. Ko was saying that Jeju's natural landscape, temperature, and weather provides for the perfect conditions to produce high-quality tea. So in his opinion, maybe a bit biased, Jeju's tea is the best tasting. <laughs> he actually said the Pusong teas are slightly more bitter than Jeju tea. Ah, uh, okay, yeah. He said it's a bit more kaukaman nut, so a kind of mm. cleaner taste to the Jeju ones. Yeah. So if you like your tea like that, then I guess you'll agree with Mr. Go. I hope they do something about the marketing for green tea. If mm. two-thirds is produced there in Korea, yeah. that's a shame if it's not well known, I think. Yeah, I think so too. And it wasn't until my interview with Mr. Ko that I learned that there are over 250 types of teas that come from the same plant. We talked about it a little bit uh, earlier in the show. Oh, <laughs> yeah, but there's like... 250? <laughs> yeah. There's like green tea... I said oolong tea, um, black tea, all, just so many. And it all depends on like when you harvest the leaves, uh, the maturity of the leaves, uh-huh. and then how it's fermented, how it's roasted, how it's prepared, et cetera, et cetera. All of that goes into the different types. Wow. Yeah. 250 from the same plant. They're yeah. really milking that yeah, plant for different really types of that. tea. Yeah, and I think that's not common knowledge for even like Brits who love their tea. Mm-hmm. You know, we don't realize that green tea and black tea and lots of other teas all come from that same plant. So this farm, mm-hmm. they've got that plant. So I'm assuming they could do all those 250 types of teas, but they don't, right? No, they don't. They could if they wanted to, but they actually specialize <laughs> in two, green tea and oolong, oolong tea. And to be honest, okay. I never really liked green tea. It's I just yeah. thought it always tasted so gross because to me it just tasted like oh, warm. Oh, really? Yeah, like warm seaweed, <laughs> like warm seaweed water. Oh, lovely! Yeah. Like a, like a lukewarm miyokuk or something yes. like that. That's not soup. seasoned at um, all. <laughs> do you do you know like I've had some really good uh, like matcha? You know the kind of powdered mm-hmm. green tea that oh, yeah. can be amazing. Oh. I'd say. Yeah. I do feel you on the normal green tea, though. It can be a little bit like, well, well what am I drinking here yeah. if, if it's not nice? Yeah, so uh, I had to be completely honest with Mr. Ko, and I told him that. I was like, <laughs> I think green tea tastes like milk, <laughs> like seaweed. <laughs> okay, that, that's not going to have gone down very well with but the granddaddy of so green funny. tea. <laughs> it was so funny. He just smiled. <laughs> he just smiled at me, Aww, like his grandfatherly nice. smile. And then he told me I was in for a treat yeah. because he said Ooh. it... It's because he said the reason is because I haven't had quality green tea and he did treat Mm. me to some of his own tea later in this next video clip. It's my first time drinking hand roasted green tea. And then he also teaches me a little bit about the culture of drinking tea. And I thought what he said was actually really quite profound. Oh, wow. I'm looking forward to this clip. Let's take a look. (laughs) <笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑> 그잖아요. 어, 그 남을 줄 때는 또 술은 또두 손으로 줘요. 저기다 자기 먼저 한 손으로 먹어. 근데 차는 두 손으로 먹어. 어, 그런 제일 나를 나를 공경하는 거예요. 나를 공경하라고 이제 차 마시네. 어, 스스로를 어, 공경하는 사람이 자기 자신을 공경하는 사람이 나한테 귀한 대접, 귀함을 받아요. 그런 의미가 있습니다. 
Oh, mm. I didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't either. So first off, I have to explain a little bit about the two-hand culture in Korea. In Korean culture, when you're mm. handing an object to or receiving an object from a superior, you do it with two hands. It's a sign of respect. And the mm-hmm. same is true when you're out for drinks with superiors or just, you know, your peers even. But what Mr. Ko is yeah. saying is that tea culture is different from soju culture and that in soju culture, when you're receiving or drinking a shot of soju, you do it with both hands as a sign of respect to your superiors. But in tea culture, Mm. you drink your tea with both hands as a sign of respect to yourself. And he says in Korean, um, yeah, it didn't, he didn't say it in the clip, but to me he says, So in other words, you are aware of the importance of self and you honor yourself Mm. by offering to yourself the best and respecting yourself. Does that make any sense? Yeah, drink Drinking the tea with two hands. Because yeah. there's not anything in career I can think of that you drink with two hands. And to mm-hmm. be honest, I wasn't completely aware that you were meant to drink tea with yeah. two hands. So that's a small <laughs> little cup. So fitting both your hands yeah, on yeah. there is quite the challenge. <laughs> it gets crowded. But he showed you like what one goes underneath mm-hmm. and one goes kind of around the cup. Yeah. Uh, and that is, I guess, a really good symbol to, you know, not just respect your superiors, which, you know, career is all about traditionally speaking with mm-hmm. Confucian society and whatnot. But to respect yourself, that's Mm. really nice. And that's something, yeah, I guess we should all do both with tea, but in Mm. life in general, I suppose. Did you like the tea he made for you, Angel? Oh, yes. It did not taste like seaweed at all <laughs> and the blend that that's he that's a good start <laughs> yeah the blend that he offered me in the video was uh like a lavender blend lavender and green tea so it was oh. really nice yeah wow so it had a bit of lavender mm-hmm. notes i've never had a, a green tea with something like that because the common one you'll find in career at the water cooler for free often wherever mm-hmm. you go is the uh hyunmi nokcha mm, so it's got yeah. those kind of like I, I think it's glutinous rice or some kind of rice-ish mm-hmm. grain in there and mm-hmm. then a bit of green tea. So it's not that high in green tea content, to be honest. Mm-hmm. That tastes kind of savory and nice, but lavender, that sounds a bit exotic. Yeah. I want to try it. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was really nice. Nice. So if I want to go out there, any recommendations for me? Yes, just a few personal recommendations. Uh, if you're going to be going there, only travel there by car. It's on the mountain road, and I don't recall seeing any mm. bus stops close by, but even then, it's a mountain road, so you just go by car, guys. If you're sensitive to cold, yeah. wait for warmer weather to go. Because of the elevation, the temperatures do, are a lot cooler than how it feels towards the coast. And they do get a bit of wind sometimes. Uh-huh. So uh, when it's nice and warm mm. outside is what I would say. Lastly, um, but in my opinion, most importantly, if you're going to check out the amazing view I was mentioning, you have to go on a clear day, like like a crystal clear day. And that's when you can get mm. the real, the full experience. Ah, nice. Yeah, don't go on a fine dusty day or maybe one where there's showers or anything like that. Right, right. Oh, as a quick FYI, Mr. Ko mentioned that they'll be starting up green tea uh, experience programs in April where you can harvest and roast your own tea. So if you're going to be here around that time, yeah, keep an eye out for that. That sounds fun. You know, it's always fun to pick the tangerines and do that experience. Mm -hmm. But picking your tea leaves and then roasting them, that's even better. I love it. What's Up in Jeju is supported by JDC, which is creating a free international city that resembles nature, embraces the future, and reaches the world. Arirang Radio.